my name is Ann Carey. I'm a graduate student at Iowa State University. And today we are here in the Department of Horticulture in the Horticulture Greenhouse. We are wrapping up one of our research projects looking at vegetable transplant production. So in this project, we are comparing growing vegetable transplants in plastic flats and with the soil block method. So I'm gonna go over a little bit of some of the measurements that we're taking in order to compare how the transplants are growing between the two different methods. Um, so here we have some of the transplants grown from the plastic flats, which are the kind of standard um, method of growing transplants where we have the individual cells where each of the plants grow um, with the plastic around them. In order to, to take some measurements, we are going to look at the plant height. But as some of you might know, um, height isn't always the best attribute in a transplant because if they're growing too close together, they can grow really tall and get leggy and then they're weak and they might break when you transplant them. So height isn't always the best indicator of health. Um, so we also are looking at the stem diameter. So if we have a thicker stem, it means more water and nutrients can be flowing up and down the plant. So that's a good indication um, of health. And then finally, we're um, using a tool called a, a spad meter, um, which is going to, to measure the, the greenness of our leaves, more or less. So it kind of is used as a proxy for the chlorophyll content or just how green the leaves are. So the greener the leaf, um, the healthier um, the plant is. Here we can see um, some of our treatments. We have um, bell peppers growing here in soil blocks and then over here in plastic flats. Um, so we're also looking at comparing five different certified organic growing media. Um, so four of them are, are products that growers can buy just from a retail commercial outlet and one of them is a, a lab mixture, um, which is our control, which we mixed ourselves. Um, so you can see um, this is the plants growing in the soil blocks. We've already removed some of the plants from the center to, to collect our data. But you can see just how they're growing in these, these freestanding blocks. And you can see here that you have to gently pull them apart. One of the big things we're looking at is the, the difference in the roots. So you can see um, because there's not a wall in between, the roots can kind of grow to the next block or just kind of have more lateral growth. And then the plants that are growing in the plastic flats, which is a more traditional common um, type of method. I can just pull out one of the plants here. And we can see the difference in the roots how they have the, the walls around them, and so they're not able to grow laterally, but they begin to grow in a circle. So you can see them kind of wrapping around. So there's um, a lot of anecdotal claims that, that transplants grown with the soil block method, with these, this more lateral roots, less restricted gr um, growth, will experience less transplant shock, and will do better once transplanted in the field. Um, because they can continue that root growth, whereas these plants, which are, have this more root circling, will take a bit longer to establish um, in the field. So that's one of the, we're also looking at the, the difference in, in the root characteristics, so the, the amount of roots, the surface area of roots, um, in order to compare these as well. And in order to do that, after we take our growth method measurements, um, we need to, to wash all of this growing media off to get um, a clean sample of the roots. So we can go look at some people who are washing those roots now. The plants, after they come out of the, the cell and we put them in the water, you can see Jenna here is already working on it. Um, so gently um, taking off all of the growing media, trying to keep the root as intact as possible so that we can um, then just measure the roots um, by themselves without, without any of the growing media. So it's a tedious, laborious pro process, but um, we can give us good data on, on what's happening below the surface um, with the roots, with our transplants. So, so far we are seeing a bit of differences between our different treatments. This is all still preliminary as we're just collecting our data now. We have to, to run our analysis, but just visually we can see differences um, between these different growing media. So each one of these um, 
trays has a different media that the plants have been planted into. So you can see here quite clearly that these ones are definitely shorter, their stems are, are thinner, um, versus these plants over here, much taller, uh, much thicker stems. So all of these were grown, um, seeded at the same time, grown in the exact same way. Um, so we're definitely seeing some, some big differences um, between the different growing media. And we can also see differences between those in the, the flats and um, in the, the plastic flats. So for instance, um, this is grown with, with one growing media and this is the exact same growing media but just in the different method. So we can see next to each other differences in some heights, differences in the, the greenness, um, probably in the stem diameter as well. So hopefully once we um, have a chance to finish collecting all of our data and analyzing it, um, we can provide some, some insight for growers as they try to determine which transplant methods are best for them, not only with um, using plastic flats, but also with the growing media. So finally, I just want to, to thank um, the North Central SARE for funding this project. This is a graduate student grant um, with North Central SARE. So um, hopefully we will be finishing this project soon and we'll be putting the report up on their website. So if you are interested in learning more, you can look at um, their website and find our results.